Hi everybody, meteorologist Matt Gray for another edition here of the Brainstorm on this Sunday on the 4News Now YouTube page. And what are we talking about today? We're talking about something that only a very few of us got to see the other night. Uh, this was taken by the Weather Service office in Spokane, and this was on Thursday... It was either Wednesday or Thursday, but earlier this week, basically. Uh, very early on, very early in the morning. Actually, I think it was, it might have been a Saturday morning. I, it, the days are blending together for me, folks. And what this is, these are called noctilucent clouds. And it's a little hard to say, but basically what it means is night shining. Literally just what it means is night shining clouds. And this was taken about 3.15 in the morning. And, well, you could see those clouds pretty bright. So they really do live up to their name. And they are a fascinating type of cloud. And so I wanted to talk more about them today in this edition uh, of the Brainstorm, as there have been a lot of noctilucent cloud sightings around the Pacific Northwest over the past uh, really couple of weeks or so. So let's talk a little bit about where these clouds form and why we can only really see them in the middle of the night. So unlike most of our clouds, which happen down in the troposphere, which are kind of anywhere between seven and about 12 miles up into the atmosphere, these noctilucent clouds, uh, they end up forming on the edge of space, near what's called the Kármán line, which is basically, the, even though there's still some layers of the atmosphere above it, uh, basically that is kind of the international known edge of space. You're in space now once you get above uh, what's called the Kármán line, even though there's some a uh, couple of couple of layers of atmosphere above that, but it more has to do with kind of the Earth's magnetic field, and so there isn't really much atmosphere actually to speak of up there. Very very little, and uh, well, that's why space station, space shuttle, spacecraft. That's why they need all those things. So let's go back down to this kind of uh, this third layer, which is the mesosphere. So the stratosphere. That's where the ozone layer is. That's where a lot of our airplanes fly. That's where kind of the very tops of thunderstorms. Sometimes they can bust their way into the bottom of the stratosphere. Then you get into the mesosphere, and this is what kind of our last really thick layer of the Earth's atmosphere. That's where a lot of meteors end up burning up, and that is where these noctilucent clouds form. And if you're going, well, wait a minute, is there a relationship there? Because we just talked about meteors in these clouds, and they're so far away from all the other clouds. Yes. Cloud formation needs something to stick to. And so little particles left over from meteors and space dust and things like that. Well, those are pretty good uh, little particles for any water vapor that's up there in the mesosphere to attach to and form clouds. So, yes. You could say that in some way, these clouds are from space. Yeah. Isn't that wild? But there are other, of course, you know, it takes two to tango. There's also stuff coming up from the ground. And, uh, of course, the water vapor, that's within our atmosphere. That's the part that the Earth provides to uh, create these noctilucent clouds. So let's talk about why you can see these clouds really only in the middle of the night and that is because of just how high up they are. So the mesosphere layer where these clouds form, 50, 60 miles up, 270,000 feet. Well, guess what? When you're up that high, you can see uh, really a long, long way. I mean, the curvature of the Earth. So if you're sitting in the dark, you look up into that high level, the sun is still shining on some of these clouds. And you notice it's about 3.15 in the morning where the Weather Service took that picture of those clouds over Spokane. And so those clouds are probably really far away. And the sun rising in the northeast, rising in the east, is actually the sunlight, even before the pre-dawn hours, is already lighting up the undersides of those clouds as the sunlight comes around the Earth. And so in, only in that moment where the sunlight hits the bottom of these noctilucent clouds and then that light bounces to where you're standing on the earth, that is the only way you are going to see these clouds. And that is one of the reasons why you really only see them at night and why they're pretty rare. They're a pretty rare sight, although they're getting less rare. And we'll talk about the reason why here uh, coming up in just a second. But yeah, really fascinating, uh, these clouds. You know, obviously with all sorts of weather phenomena like this, there's still a lot to figure out and kind of how sensitive they are, how 
these clouds form. There's a lot of smart people that, that talk about this. So let's talk a little bit about maybe some human factors involved and why we are starting to see more and more noctilucent clouds. After all, um, a report in, in, the, uh, in 2018 in the American Geophysical Union noted that, say, back in the 1800s, it was very rare to see these clouds. And so it was quite a momentous event and it is becoming far, far less so now here in the 21st century. In fact, take a look here. This was uh, just a couple of weeks ago where, yeah, there's actually a satellite that is studying these. And so this AM satellite uh, measured more, you can see that kind of red spike there near the summer solstice at, at day zero. This year, they measured more noctilucent clouds around the planet than at any other time since the launch of this thing in 2007 so that's pretty remarkable there's some theories about this that uh, there was a recent rocket launch that had more uh, more rocket burn time and uh, I think it was the SpaceX one but more rocket burn time uh, in kind of that layer of the atmosphere that mesosphere where these clouds form um, there's a lot of different things about why it can mean uh, one of the ways one of the first examples of noctilucent clouds was um, during a volcanic eruption of Krakatau in 1885, where suddenly these clouds started to pop up more often. And that's because you've got volcanic gases. Not only is volcanic ash getting up into that high in the atmosphere, not only does it provide more things for water vapor to stick to, but it's actually was one, it actually was pumping more water vapor into the mesosphere. And so rocket engines can do the same way because after all, it's just chemicals reacting that creates that rocket thrust. And so uh, a lot of times, when you get some of these these different gases up there they run into the oxygen because it is mostly oxygen still even though there's not much of it it's still mostly oxygen up in that layer of the atmosphere and when they interact well they create water vapor and that is another uh, reason another study once again this one published in the american geophysical union in 2018 uh, that showed that uh, one certain greenhouse gas is actually and uh, may certainly be responsible for a large increase in these noctilucent clouds and why we're seeing them more often. Like we saw here, this, uh, by the way, related to that spike that you saw on the satellite graph. This was a couple of weeks ago in Seattle. Wow, the sure Weather Service in Seattle took that. So related to this spike of more noctilucent clouds detected around the planet than at any other time uh, here in the last... Uh, well, about uh, not quite a couple of decades, but about 15 years or so that we've been measuring these clouds in the atmosphere. So let's talk about this, right? So it's not just CO2 when we talk about greenhouse gases, global warming, climate change, whatever you want to call it. That's a big one, but there's also other types of gases. And the big one is methane uh, or CH4. Methane, it doesn't last as long, but it is very, very potent and a lot of that methane does work its way up into the mesosphere. An example of methane is natural gas. So natural gas emits a lot of methane. So every time, for example, I turn on the tankless water heater, uh, you know, it burps out a little bit of methane and that ends up, uh, once again, not lasting as long as CO2, because, largely because of some of these processes I'm gonna show you, but it does contribute significantly. It's, it warms up uh, things much more effectively than CO2 does than carbon dioxide. So. Here's what happens up in the mesosphere. CH4 couple, runs into a couple of oxygen molecules. They say, hey, how are you doing? Let's collide. Boom. What do they create? Two molecules of water, H2O, and one molecule of carbon dioxide, CO2. So there's already plenty of stuff floating around up there in the mesosphere, little bits of, you know, here and there that water vapor can stick to. And now for over 100 years, we're putting more water vapor into the mesosphere. And so is it any surprise that we're seeing more of these noctilucent clouds? So definitely a, a human component into why we are seeing more of these and something to think about in that regard. Another sign of uh, kind of how we're changing the planet. Boy, when you see these things though, they're so beautiful, they're so amazing. And uh, I'm gonna keep it, try to keep it positive here. and. It really is such a special treat when you get to see these, even though they're far more common than they used to be. 
it is such a special treat to see these clouds especially if you're up really really early it's nice to see something cool when you are literally burning the midnight oil and man what gorgeous clouds really lucky that we got this shot from the weather service over uh up on the west plains in spokane and uh you know, maybe this will get you some inspiration. Go out, to, uh, you know, maybe if you don't catch an aurora one of these nights, maybe you get to see some noctilucent clouds. So that's just one of the really cool little niches of meteorology. I'm so happy that we got to see this and got the opportunity to talk to you about one of the coolest types of clouds that is out there, these noctilucent night shining clouds. If you like this video, we do brainstorm videos on the 4 News Now YouTube channel every single week. Go ahead, give us a like and subscribe for all your news and weather information from around the inland northwest in Spokane, Washington. All right, have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week for another edition of The Brainstorm.